Terminal count. Copy. Houston, you are go for TLI. Over. So we're going to try and do this one all in one take, which is pretty difficult and I don't normally do. Here we are launching an Atlas V with five boosters. One's gonna hang on there a little longer, and we're gonna put up two payloads with two different launches. Each of these are a new prototype type vehicle, and these are all built with the purpose of delivering raw supplies that get assembled on site. I started playing around with the Kerbal attachment system and Kerbal inventory system mods that allow you to build on site and remove parts. The current game has that as a feature now, but I, uh, I hadn't used it before. So one is going to park in low orbit, and this one's going to make its way to Minmus to be tested out on the base. Gotten very good at these targeted landings by now, though, so... The spacecraft puts itself on a ballistic trajectory with lathe and then burns hard to get itself out of the atmosphere. Otherwise, the orbiter section would burn up in the atmosphere of the planet as it arrives. Unfortunately, the lander probe lost contact before it could make it into the atmosphere due to a battery issue and transmitter issue, not having enough range. But I was able to get a ton of good data over several successive orbits. It's a good candidate for colonization, and this mission is the first of many to come. Next up, an SLS flight here with a new liquid hydrogen and oxygen tanker. The production rate at the base is outpacing what I can store, so having another tanker on site is going to really help that out. The first tanker has departed already for Duna to support operations there and deliver tons of hydrogen for the crew in orbit.
tanker has several external supplies as well to deliver to the surface that the crew can use for hand tools and a bunch of struts to be able to assemble the base. Mid-separation, there's an issue where the decoupler on the upper stage breaks and the tanker has to emergency change course and get clear of the debris. At this point, with the problem resolved, we're able to head to Minmus at a lower fuel reserve, but the craft is able to make it on its own because it is empty. Jump cut to another base element being landed around the same time. This is a, a good example of what it actually takes to land these base elements and position them uh, because I get asked a lot how I actually do this and it is really, really a pain, but you can see it is possible and you can scoot your way to victory. I had a contract for two base expansions, one including a science lab and the other just including raw living space. Next up is a set of liquid hydrogen tanks to sit on the surface and act as overflow storage. These four spheres are going to travel to Minmus and rendezvous with Sky Crane in orbit for delivery to the surface. Meanwhile, the core booster from that launch is going to attempt another landing. The return of these solid boosters has been a problem for me ever since trying to do it, so we're going to be looking at other solutions in the future for getting a little bit of money back from each launch. Next up, the Sky Crane. This is a 100 ton Sky Crane able to lift vast amounts of material to and from the surface and we're going to use it for infrastructure buildup because it will be a multi-use platform. It's also delivering a lander because the core stage had extra capacity. Every time we meet up with one of these liquid hydrogen tanks, we're going to snag one and bring it down to the surface. touchy for these so it is like actually doing rocket surgery on landing each time. 
but I've gotten pretty darn good at it as you can see. A structure was built up by the Kerbals on the surface there with docking ports to align all the incoming liquid hydrogen tanks. Additionally, another base contract came in, so I delivered a second base element to the surrounding area. Tank 2 departs from the stack and heads down to the surface. This is really difficult to do, so this is sped up by like 20 times. Sky Crane departs and is able to go refuel and get ready for the next sortie. From there I'm able to use my ground crew to build up the supports on the tanks and make sure that they're not going anywhere. We can mine and produce excess liquid hydrogen to store at Tycho Station from now on. So in the next one, we're gonna see what this base can really do, and we're gonna expand on the Duna project with a lot of the surface base elements there. Also, it's just amazing how far things have come from this first little outpost to a real working infrastructure based on what we would see if the Artemis program really starts popping off. So yeah, thanks, and uh, I hope to see you in the next one.